ओके बडी सो गुड इवनिंग वन अगेन एवरी वन सो वील स्टार्ट आर क्लासेस विद द ग्रेट नॉर्थ इंडियन प्लेन्स ओके और यू कैन से इट एज द ग्रेट प्लेन ऑफ नॉर्थ इंडिया ओके सो दिस इज अ सेकेंड फिजिकल डिविजन लाइक वी वी आर स्टडी ऑन द सिक्स फिजिकल डिविजन ऑफ इंडिया सो इन दैट पार्ट वी आर स्टडी अबाउट द नॉर्थ एंड नॉर्थ ईस्ट माउंटेन्स ओके सो इन विच वी हैव स्टडी अबाउट द हिमालयस सो इन दिस पार्टिकुलर पार्ट नाउ वील स्टडी अबाउट द सेकेंड फिजिकल डिविजन ऑफ इंडिया दैट इज वॉट दैट इज ग्रेट नॉर्थ इंडियन प्लेन्स ओके सो दिस इज द सेकेंड पार्ट सो नाउ वी हैव स्टडी अबाउट द हिमालयस we also in that particular part we also study the various parts of all those ranges all those ranges and the important mountains peaks and everything so now in this particular part also we will study in the detail manners and in this particular part some important points are there so that also will be covered so great plain plain of india okay so for the great plain of india in this particular part we will see that we have the various divisions okay like here you can see the various divisions okay so these particular divisions is physically okay or like we can call it as the geomorphological okay geomorphologically divisions okay or we can call it as the physical divisions okay and then again we have one more divisions that is what that is regional divisions so everything we study in the detail manner now in this particular part if you see here so here in this we have the great indian plains okay so in the great indian plains we have the various parts like we have various divisions physical divisions and also the physical divisions and also we have the parts of regional divisions so in that particular part why do we call why do we why do we call this plain as the great indian plain okay why do we call that plain as a great indian plain see it is because of like see it is because of it is the world's it is world's largest alluvial tract it is world's world's largest alluvial tract okay and we know that this particular tract and this alluvial tract is important is very important for growing of crops okay all those lands which are alluvial they are fertile in nature okay so in this particular part so in this particular part first we will study that which part of our country which part of uh, nearby the himalaya is the great indian plain okay the great north indian plain see here we study about the himalayas formation this is what suppose this is the eurasian plate okay and then here we had the thethi sea here we had the thethi sea and here we have the indian plate okay and when we had the collision between these two plates okay when we had the compressive forces acting between compressive forces acting between these two plates okay there we had the formation of the various ranges of himalayas okay first we had the formation of trans himalayan then after it we had the formation of three ranges important ranges of himalayas so in that part first we had the greater himalaya then we had the lesser himalaya then we had the outer himalayas okay so now after this part when we when they had the compressive forces acting between these two plates okay so now when it is acting when compressive forces is high from the indian plate side so what will happen there will be uh, blockage in that part okay and because of that part we had the formation of a uh, because of uh, breaking of this part we all did study about the faults okay so now in this particular part see here after when the last the last moment we had the compressive forces which led to the formation of himalaya we had that is outer himalayas okay so now when there is a formation so because of high compressive force what will happen there what happened at the foothills of shivalik at the 
फुट हिल्स ऑफ शिवालिक देयर हैड अ जियो सिंकलाइन डिप्रेशन ओके सो एट दिस पर्टिकुलर पार्ट वी हैड अ जियो सिंकलाइन डिप्रेशन ओके सो नाउ इन योर माइंड द डाउट विल कम दैट and this particular geosyncline depression is only what it is the great north indian plain okay great north indian plain so in this particular part you all would, you all would have have the doubt that sir this is the, this is the geosyncline depression but how that particular part depression can be come to known as the plains okay so that particular part also we'll see details here see here what happened when we had the formation of the three ranges of himalayas okay then after that we had the creation of geosyncline depression then and this particular part this particular part came to be known as the plains okay see what happened we know we know that we have the various glaciers various glaciers and lakes okay various glaciers and lakes in this greater himalayas also some glacier lakes are present in the lesser himalayas okay so all these water bodies all these water bodies when they are coming from the these parts when they are traveling from these parts so what will happen so like because of its movement see now if some particular if some rocky materials are there okay okay or if any heavy materials are there and if they are being located in the slopey side so if they are being located in slopey side and even if you if you have the power to push it initially so what will happen now that particular part also will reach the foothills of that particular mountain okay so in the same way what happen the rivers flowing from this what uh, from mountainous area so what happen they are, they are had at the erosional activities there had the erosional activities like they would break some particles okay like suppose if you see in the all those flood areas okay like if you would have heard the name in the sikkim when we had the flood by the pramputra river okay or in the uttarakhand like you can see that suppose if this is the land part okay and here we have the rivers flowing when we have the floods so what it is happening it is cutting down some uh, land parts some plain parts and there again that flood of waters are reaching there so similarly in this part also since it is flowing from the slopey side so there also is this water all those rivers flowing in this area what they will do they will do some erosional activities so due to which there will be some sediments which will erode from the mountains and they will reach the surface area of these particles okay of this geosyncline part okay so when it reaches so after few years what happened due to the sediments brought by the rivers by the himalayan rivers okay or you can call it as the perennial rivers perennial rivers so all those sediments brought by the perennial rivers what happened all those sediments got deposited deposited here okay then after that this particular part came to be known as the plains okay so that's why here we why, that's why in the first point we studied that this is the world's largest alluvial tract or world's largest alluvial tract so it is because of the all those sediments it is because of the depositional activities because the erosional activities done by the river it is done in the all those mountainous area and the depositional activities like all those sediments are being deposited at this particular at the geosyncline depression site okay and there we have the formation of plains okay so that's why this particular part is known as the world largest alluvial tract world's largest alluvial tract okay so now in this particular part you all would have got got doubt that what is the difference between the plains plateaus and the mountains so now see here in this particular part plains plateaus mountains see in this case what will happen in the mountains cases what will happen we will have the high high elevated land part 
okay at the high at the maximum height okay and then that here the top will be what it will be like narrow okay like you can call it as a like a tip point okay like you can call it uh, or you can call it as the like a, uh, the tip of the needle okay so light it will be in the narrow type okay and it will be what high elevated land okay so it will be at the maximum height nearby the surroundings of the earth so that is what mountain now if you see about the plateaus so plateau is also the elevated land okay but they won't have that much height like suppose if here we have the earth okay so their height will be like only we can call it as a like 200 meters or 300 meters that height will be there so that particular part is known as what plateau and in this part what will happen in the plateau part like this will have the height and here in this case what will happen this here the upper surface of this particular land will be what it is flat okay it will be flat of the elevated land so that is what that is the plateau okay now in this case of plains what we will see it will be the land it will be the surface earth body okay and there will be no elevated land or anything okay and here we have the all those settlements settlements okay so this is what it is plains so that is the difference between the plains plateaus and the mountains so that was the difference between the plains plateaus and the mountains okay now in this particular part we were studying that why do we call this plain as the great north indian plain so in that particular part first we saw that it is the world's world's largest alluvial tract okay and why it is world's largest alluvial tract we saw that all those sediments brought by the rivers okay and that is being deposited in the geosyncline depression okay so there we have the deposition of alluvial soil okay so what are all those rivers which make this uh, as the great north indian plain or a, which make this as the world largest alluvial tract so in that particular we have the ganga river we have brahmaputra river brahmaputra river and we have the indus river and also the tributaries of all these rivers are acting also the tributaries of all these rivers are leading for the formation of the alluvial tract and this particular part c and the second region is what it is the it is as a single stretch land okay it is at the single stretch single stretch of the largest fertile land just fertile land largest fertile land okay and this particular part if you see it extends for the 3200 kilometers it extends for the 3200 kilometers but in this case what happens in india only we have the 2400 kilometers in india okay only 2400 kilometers of these plains are being located in india and other parts are in pakistan and bangladesh okay so remember that part okay like 800 kilometers are being located in the pakistan and the bangladesh area okay so that is about this particular part now we will move to the all those nodes in the ppts so see here location it is what it is the vast flat plains okay so plains will be what it will be flat okay and it will be at the surface of the earth body or, the, or you can say the continental continental part okay so it is a vast plains lying to the south okay we saw that first we had the formation of greater himalaya then we have the lesser himalayas then we have the outer himalayas and then after that we had the formation of geosyncline depression okay so it is the it is at the south of this particular himalayas okay so it is the south of the himalayas and north of the peninsular plateaus so if you see its map okay in our indian country okay if you see actually this map is not that much correct. so if you see in this map so at this particular point we have the great north indian plains okay and we have the peninsular plateaus at this area and some parts of the meghalaya okay 
so here what is happening it is south of the himalayas and here we have the almost himalayas part okay so it is the south of the himalayas and north of the peninsular plateaus and all this are it is formed by the alluvial deposits of the indus ganga and brahmaputra river systems okay so river system is what all those tributaries river also tributaries also comes under this particular part okay so if you see the extension of this great north indian plain we we have it in the rajasthan punjab haryana uttar pradesh bihar west bengal assam okay so in all these states we have the extension of this great north indian plain so remember all those states name okay and it is the fertile section if you find anywhere alluvial soil so that particular area will be what fertile okay and there we have the it is about of 7.5 lakh square kilometer where the where we have that 40 percentage of india's population lives there okay and this particular this particular land is famous for the agriculture okay so here in this diagram you can see so we have the rivers originating from here that class as mountains so because of flowing of the rivers indus and its tributaries its tributaries like we have the jhelum chenab all those rivers and the sriyok rivers okay so in these areas we have the formation of plains then river ganga is flowing from here okay so here in these areas we have the formation of plains then river brahmaputra is entering okay and in these areas we have the formation of plains in the assam area so all these parts okay north indian plain plain means is not that only in the north india also the parts of assam is assam comes in the north indian plains so that is about that particular point now if you see in this particular point so see here all we talk about the 3200 kilometers okay is total length and in india we have the 2400 kilometers length and other lands are being located in the pakistan area and in the bangladesh okay it is being extended so that's why including all these area it is the largest alluvial tract okay now in this particular part all the in the himalayas we saw that in the western side its width will be what at the maximum extent okay so similarly in the north indian plains also in the north indian plains also in the western side we have the maximum width okay where if you see in the eastern side there we have the narrow width okay and the great indian plain is 200 meter above the mean sea level okay so this is the important point and this it is like see at if latitude if you see it is looking like a plain okay and why actually see actually there is a difference in the elevated lands okay in the that like a, there is a difference in the height type okay like per kilometer we have 15 cm difference of height okay but that is like a, that is like a 0 meter okay so that's why is uh, not visible to us and we are not comparing the height of this particular part but we must remember that there we have the high difference 15 cm uh, 15 cm per kilometer at some places not at every places at some places okay so that is about this particular the great north indian plain some introduction about the great north indian plain so now we enter into the and all we saw that it, it is formed by the deposition of the sediments brought by the river so remember that it is being formed by the depositional process okay so now we enter into the next part here in this diagram you can see here here we have the geosyncline depression and there we had a deposition of this particular part and there we had the creation of this indogangetic plain okay so in the great indian north in north indian plain we also call it as the indogangetic plains so we need to remember that point also okay so now in this particular part you can see here see we have the rivers okay at the at this particular mountains of himalayas mountain areas of the himalayas and from like some rivers are being originated from this point or this point and when they are flowing okay then after it again some rivers are emerging from the lesser himalayas and they are becoming tributaries of these rivers 
okay so they are bringing all those sediments downwards okay and they are depositing at the foothills of the shivali and that deposition is that deposition is named as what the great north indian plains so now we have finished the introduction about the, the great north indian plains now we will move into the divisions of the divisions of the north indian plains divisions of north indian plains so this is what it will be the physical divisions okay so now see here now like once we have the formation once we have that geo syncline depression it is filled up by the sediments okay now that particular sediments are being divided into the various parts okay we have the four divisions okay so here we have the first one we have the bhavar if you want to arrange from north to south okay so first one we have the bhavar then we have the terai okay then in this particular part we have the bhangar and then we have the khadar okay so the difference between all these parts also we will see in the our class okay and this bhangar and khadar okay what will happen like this we have this alluvial tract okay and we know that we have the various rivers flowing in the great north indian plains okay so what will happen suppose if this is the flowing area of a particular rivers okay it is the flowing area of the particular rivers now in this case what happens so once the flood comes so all those sediments brought by the rivers so if flood comes so what will happen these waters will get these waters will get spreaded throughout this part also and in the other side also okay now once the water once the water becomes normal once this particular side it becomes normal so what will happen all those sediments brought by the rivers it will be at that particular place only sediments so it won't be taking the sediments back okay so that sediments will be there at that particular place okay now again again in the next year again if they brought the floods okay so again the some sediments what will happen so these sediments first see first these sediments which is brought by the rivers and it is being sedimented being deposited so that particular soil we known as what khadar okay so this particular soil khadar soil is known as what new alluvial soil it is new alluvial soil okay now again if in next year again if flood comes if again flood comes so in that case what will happen again it will bring some sediments okay and it will get deposited at this particular place okay so now in this case what will happen this these sediments okay these sediments will become old alluvial soil okay and that will be known as what bhangar and the newly deposited soil again here at this particular part so this will become the new alluvial soil and that will be known as what khadar okay so in the detailed manner we will see in our classes like khadar and bhangar how you can say like if you see in the family members like a person now who is mother in law a lady now who is mother in law once upon a time she was also a daughter in law okay so in this way we can understand that daughter in law so in this way we can understand that this bhangar soil okay now first this bhangar soil first it was the khadar soil now after it due to the processes now it has become old so now it is come to be known as bhangar and again we have the khadar the new soil okay so in this way we can understand so now we will go in the detail manner of this particular part so about the characteristics of the north indian plains if you see we saw that its area is of 7.5 lakh square kilometers its length is of 3200 kilometers okay in which we have 2400 kilometers in india and in this particular part also we saw that western side western side we have the maximum width and in the eastern side it is somewhat narrow okay so that also we saw okay now you see here width increases when heading towards the west okay it is the latest topography built in the quaternary period okay 
so if questions is being asked that to arrange according to the periods of the emerging of particular land like uh, suppose if they give options of like great himalayas lesser himalayas outer himalayas okay and then they will ask you to arrange this particular the great north indian plains okay so in that case first we have the formation of great himalayas then after it we have the formation of lesser himalayas then after it we have the formation of outer himalayas and then after the outer himalayas formation we have the great north indian plain okay so being almost flat the rivers flowing here often lead to the flooding okay and there we have the formation of various regions okay and that regions we have the khadar and bangar so now if you see the divisions of this particular north indian plains so it is being divided into four parts visa bhavar khadar terai bangar okay so if uh, all the we said that arrangement from north to south and remember that all the questions have been asked from this point so north to south first we have the bhangar then we have the terai okay then we have the bhangar and then we have the khadar okay so now in this particular part for just for the introduction purpose so it is c classification of north indian plains it is c so geomorphologically or we can call it as the physically it is being divided into four parts we have the bhavar terai and we have the alluvial plain in which we have the khadar and the bhangar okay so and in the regional division second division we have that is the regional division so in the regional division we have the rajasthan division punjab haryana then we have the ganges okay in the in the ganges we have the upper ganga plain middle ganga plain lower ganga plain and we have the brahmaputra plain okay so these are in, these are the parts of the regional divisions okay so now in this particular part i will show you in the map see here these are all those regions of the north indian plain see here in the punjab haryana plain we have some parts of the rajasthan plains we have the great north indian plain then here in the uttarakhand area some parts of the uttarakhand the up we have the upper ganga plain then in the up and bihar part up and bihar we have the middle ganga plain then in this in the assam area we have the brahmaputra plain and in the west bengal area west bengal area and some parts of the bihar and the jharkhand area we have the lower ganga plain okay and in this particular part you all remember that brahmaputra plain is only in the assam area okay and the west bengal area and the west bengal area is not being formed by the brahmaputra river it west bengal area is being formed west bengal plains are being formed only by the ganga okay so remember that okay and in this west bengal area we have a famous place darjeeling okay which is famous for the tea cultivation so this particular part this this darjeeling area is not a plain it is a mountainous area so we have to remember this particular point also in this part so that is about the map now see here in this particular diagram how we have the differentiation of the bhavar and terai and then we have the bhangar and khadar now suppose see here we have suppose we have the himalayan ranges here okay here we have the ganga plain so here what is happening okay so all those rivers flowing from these areas it is bring it is eroding the parts of this these himalayas okay so these Hima, these parts are being broken down and it is brought to the geosyncline site okay so when it is being brought so what is happening all those big big boulders type okay all those big big boulders type they are getting deposited near the foothills of the shivali okay so here the in this particular part near the foothills of shivali we will see the all those big boulders type okay so here in this case what will happen now river is flowing okay now once the region once the once the river reaches the ground surface near the north indian plain near near the foothills of the shivali so what will happen now because of the presence of big big boulders okay so what will happen rivers will start flowing these gaps okay like suppose if we arrange anywhere 
big big boulders type okay so there is a gap between them okay so here in this case what will happen here the river will disappear in the bhavar area in the bhavar area river will disappear means what it will be flowing between these all those big big boulders type okay and so here we have the big boulders now in the next part if we move in the third region what will happen these big boulders okay now it has been deposited here so, so in the next part here we have boulders type but it will very small like minute particles we can say so here what will happen so here these water bodies again it will re-emerge re-emerge and it will flow so this is the power area where we will have the big boulders type then in the terai region what will happen we will have the rivers flowing in these areas so what will happen now these sediments would have broken down so after this what happened, all those minute particles they would have got deposited in these areas so here in this case here at this particular in the terai region what will happen we will be seeing the marshy and the swampy areas marshy and the swampy areas in the sorry swampy areas in the terai region okay so in this particular part and also again in the terai region what will happen here rivers will rivers will re-emerge okay so here rivers re-emerges in the terai region so first we were seeing about the bhavar okay so we will study in a detail man about the bhavar so in the bhavar area what will happen rivers will disappear okay now waters are flowing in the in between the gaps of these boulders okay so here in this particular part what we can say that here this particular plane is what it is porous in nature okay it is porous in nature or we can call it as the it is the permeable in nature okay and this bhavar plains is between punjab and assam area like how we had a we have we had this particular divisions of the greater himalaya like first we had the greater himalayas then we had the lesser then we have the shivali so after this shivali we'll have this particular part bhavar plains okay and that will be extending from the punjab to assam okay so that will be extending from the punjab to assam and it will be it will be wide in the western side and narrow in the eastern side okay and the total wide it will be of 10 8 to 10 kilometers okay. so that much width will be it, it will be happening so in the western side it will be wide and in the eastern side it will be narrow so in this particular we say that a here the river will disappear so here in the punjab area we have the indus river so according to the reverse basis if you see so this particular bhavar plains will be between the indus to tista river so between indus to tista river we will be seeing this particular plains bhavar plains and this particular plains is known as what it is the dry river course okay because now all those water bodies are flowing in between the gap of these boulders okay and we are not able to see the particular part the upper part of these areas okay so here we will be seeing all these big big boulders so here in the upper part since we are not able to see the water flowing in these areas so that's why we call it as the dry river course okay so that is about the point of this bhavar plains and in this particular plains remember one more point that it is not fit for the agriculture purpose okay so this area is not fit for the not fit for agriculture why it is not fit because of the presence of these big boulders okay so because of presence of these big boulders it is not fit for the not suitable for the agriculture okay so here in this map you can see here we have the foothills of Siwali. then after that we have all those big big boulders type that is bhavar plain okay so that is about the bhavar plain so in this particular part now in the next part we will study about the terai okay 
So there I after that bhavar. Okay, here we have the big boulder type that is bhavar planes. So after this bhavar, we'll have mild particle sediments. Okay, like swampy and marshy areas, and that particular area where the rivers will re-emerge. That particular area will be known as what? Terai region. Okay. That particular area will be known as Terai region. And since in these areas we have the alluvial soils, okay, and they are in the like mild particles. So the, in these areas, what will happen? These area because of presence of water and, and the soil, okay, all those mild particles, these areas will be what? Forested land. Forested land. So in this area only we will be seeing the all those important national parks, important forest areas. Okay, like we have the Kajiranga National Park. Kajiranga National Park. We have the Manas National Park. Okay, all these important national parks can be seen in the Terai region area. Okay, so in the Terai region is what? It is the forested land. Okay. And in this particular Terai region will be what will happen here in this Terai region we will have the humus, humus content in the soil. Okay. And also it will be rich in this particular soil will be rich in nitrogen. It will, it will be rich in nitrogen. Okay. So that's why this particular area is what? It is the forested land. Okay. And in this particular part, all the vegetation, it will be marshy land. Okay, marshy and swampy land. Okay, and in this particular part, see, actually, we have a lot of trees, forested land in these areas. But what is happening? Now, people are cutting down the trees. Okay, cutting down the trees. It is best suitable for the agriculture. But we, we did not have the agriculture in these area in the earlier times. But nowadays people are cutting the trees. Okay. So here large amount of deforestation is there. Okay. Cutting down the trees and then they are using the soil as the they are using the soil for the agriculture purpose. Okay. They are making suitable for the agriculture purpose. So in the Terra area, that's why they, and because of the presence of water and the soil, we have the forested land. Okay, and in this particular part, see, we study and the Terra region, if you see, it is mostly wide in the UP and Bihar area. UP and Bihar area, area, it is mostly wide, but see, in all earlier parts, we were seeing that in the western side, it, uh, this particular mountains or the plains is having the maximum width. But whereas in the case of Terra region, what will happen? In case of Terra region, what will happen? Here in this particular part, in the western side, it is somewhat narrow, okay? And in the eastern side, it is having the width, okay? And why do we have width in this area, okay? Why do we have width this in this, uh, in the eastern side? Because of the, because if you see, we have the monsoonal rainfall in these eastern sides, okay? We don't have monsoonal rainfall in the Punjab area, Okay, or in the Uttarakhandia, yeah? we don't have that much monsoonal, but monsoonal rainfall. But where you see in the Punjab and Uttarakhand, we have some amount, but in the large amount of rainfall is being in these areas. Okay, so that's why it is narrow in the western side. Okay, and the main important crops, if you see, so UP is famous for the cultivation of sugar cane. Okay, then we can see rice cultivation. We can see wheat cultivation in these areas. So this is about the this is about this particular part of the Terai region. Okay. So now in the details part, we'll see. So first we have seen about the Bhavar already. So first we'll see about the Bhavar. So see here, it is being located eight to 10, 10 km wide. Okay. In the foothill of the Shivali from the in the river to the Tista River, and it is formed by the deposition of the large size sediments, okay, like big, big boulders already be talked, okay, so that is being brought by the Himalayan rivers. Due to the ex excessive permeability of the rivers, so this area, what happens, rivers disappear in these regions, okay, and what are all those problems? It is unsuitable for agriculture, 
we have the cattle rearing in this particular part okay so that's why in this particular part we will be seeing all those nomadic pastures in these areas okay so about the nomadic herds you would have heard so in this area only you will be seeing all those nomadic herds okay and here we if we have the trees so trees will be with the long roots okay like big boulders we have so what will happen trees has trees to have the long roots to get supply of the water and the nutrients okay so suppose in these areas if we have see we don't have that much trees but if we have the trees so they will be having the long roots in the bhavar area now next we move to the terai okay so this terai is what 10 to 20 km wide region found to the south of the bhavar and it is being the pushed by the sediments of the himalayan rivers and here we have the small small mild particles that is of the sand and the clay okay and we all we study that here river re emerges okay so here what has happened due to the low permeability and the absence of streams rivers become visible again so here the rivers what happens re emerges so here in this map you can see here with the shivalik foothills and then after that we have the bhavar and in these areas where we have the large amount of forest okay so this is what terai region okay so here other features if you see it is marshy and the moist area and in this particular area since it is like marshy and moist area so there we have the malaria and other diseases frequently it will be taking places here we have the dense forest and also we have the biodiversity in these areas and here we have the important national park dudhwa national park we, we talked about the kajiranga we talked about the manas national park so important national parks are being located in these areas it is suitable and fertile areas for the agriculture and because of the high amount of national parks trees in this area so here we have the problem of deforestation and that is that is that they are using for the agriculture purpose okay so that is about the sorry that is about the terai now we come to the third division that is the anger so here already we saw that like suppose a river is flowing okay so here what happens once the flood comes it deposits it deposit some sediments in the both sides it deposits some sediments in the both sides okay so when it deposits first so that particular part will be known as what khadar we can call it as a new alluvial soil now again in the next wave the flood comes so again some sediments will be deposited at this particular place okay so this particular place so again this soil so this particular soil will be again it will be known as the khadar and then and this particular soil will be known as what bhangar okay so now this becomes the old alluvial soil and this becomes the new alluvial soil okay so remember that bhangar is what it is the old alluvial soil okay and khadar is what it is the new alluvial soil so remember that this particular part okay so discussion about the bhangar so high plains made up of the old alluvial soil and these particular soils are lime rich okay and it is not that much useful for agriculture why because in the old alluvial soil what will happen here this particular old alluvial soil it consists of the conkers okay like you can say the calcareous matters like in this uh, some stones small small pebbles will be there in these areas so that's why it is not that much useful for the agriculture purpose okay other features if we see so in this plain we have the erosion so due to the erosion what happens the upper soil okay suppose if this is the land okay so the upper part upper part of this it get erodes okay and when the when it get erodes so here the softer soil present in the upper part what will happen they will get removed and the stone and sandy soil will emerge okay and that particular soil will be known as what bhur so remember that what do you mean by the bhur bhur means what it is the 
old alluvial soil in which what happens the upper soft soil gets removed get eroded okay and there we have the appearance of the sandy soil or you can call it as the somewhat stony type okay so that particular part is known as what that particular soil is known as what good then we have the raised soil okay so like we know that for the agriculture purpose we use water okay we bring water from the ground okay we use the ground water so we bring the ground water upwards by the capillary actions okay by the capillary actions we bring so in that case what happens like once this water gets finished so what happens at the upper part at this particular part okay or also from the ground if it is being brought so at this particular part the white color soil gets deposited okay and that's uh, that white color will be due to the presence of salt okay so due to the excessive irrigation in some areas okay a white layer of salt gets accumulated at the top surface of the soil so that particular part is known as what ray or the polar so remember what do we mean by the ray or polar so that is what due to the capillary actions we have the we have the presence of a white layer salt white layer of salt that is being accumulated on the top surface of the soil in the bhangar area so that particular soil is known as what ray or polar so we are studying about the bhur and we are studying about the ray or polar so now we come to the next part that is the khadar or the we can call it that is the what flood plain okay so in this particular it is a low lying area formed by the young alluvial soil so all you see that new alluvial soil will be known as what khadar and this soil will what happen it will get renewed everywhere every every year okay due to floods in the khadar region so what will happen that particular khadar area if uh, there we do not have the deposition so there that particular soil will be known as what the bhangar and then again the newly deposited soil will be known as what khadar and this particular soil is highly fertile for the agriculture it is called beds in punjab okay and in this plain we have the erosive and also we have the depositional features okay like we have the sand blast we have the meander we have the oxbow lake so this particular part okay it, it is the it is the erosion and depositional activities of flowing water or we can call it as the river so this particular part we will see in the physical geography when we study about physical geography and the landforms formed by the rivers so there we will study this particular part meander oxbow lake and the sand blast okay then the plains of the brahmaputra valley are known for the presence of their riverine island so you all would have heard the name of majoli majoli okay so in this majoli is what it is the world's largest riverine island okay it is the world's largest riverine island means what riverine islands in what this particular island it is being formed by the deposition of the rivers okay so in between rivers we have the islands and that is being formed by the rivers so that's why it is the riverine islands and this particular riverine islands it is being formed by the brahmaputra river so we must know about this particular part also okay so now we come to the difference between the bhavar and the terai okay so in bhavar what happens it the region extends from indus to the tista river but whereas if in the terai region if you see it extends parallel and south of the bhava region then this is the this particular bhava is what it is permeable in nature and here we have the fine alluvial soil and it is covered with the forest so in this area we have the deposition of stone gravel and the pebbles the width of the bhava is 8 km to 10 km we have studied tamra it is measured in the 16 km the width of the terai region is from 20 to 30 km that is of the maximum extent then we saw that bhava region is not suitable for agriculture but where if we see the terai region that is suitable for the agriculture and the, it is the high forested areas so now we come to the difference between the bhangar and the khadar okay so now in this particular part if you see we already saw that a this bhangar is what it is the old alluvial soil then khadar is the 
new eligible soil. Okay, and this particular bhangar in Punjab it is known as chaya, and khada soil in Punjab it is known as bait. Okay, this particular bhangar is rich in lime resources, and here khada is rich in the eligible soil. And this bhangar is unsuitable for agriculture, and here it is highly fertile and it is suitable for agriculture, and intensive farming is none here in this particular part. Okay. And similarities, if we see the sedimentary topography created by the river. So we know that these both are being created by the rivers. Okay. In both places, we have the presence of the eligible soil. One is difference is that Bangar is old, whereas Khadar is new eligible soil. Okay. And here is this all those it is what these both are what flood plains. Remember that Bangar and Khadar are what flood plains. But after few years, what happens? Bangar becomes Bangars, Bangars becomes older, so Khadar will be the new flood plains. Okay, so in that case, what happens? So at the mature phase of the river, like during the flood plains, it deposited all these parts, so which is known as Khadar and Bangar. So these are what it is the mature phase of the rivers. Okay, so that is about the four physical divisions of the North Indian plain. Now we have entered into the regional divisions of the northern plains. Okay, so in the regional divisions, we have the various divisions. One is the Rajasthan, second one is Punjab and Haryana, third one is the Ganga plain, and fourth one we have the Brahmaputra plain. So in the Ganga plain, we have three divisions upper Ganga plain, middle Ganga plain, and the lower Ganga plain. Okay, so now in this particular plain, see here, in the some parts of the Rajasthan. Okay, we have this plain. And then Satla Yamuna plain, there we have the plain in the Punjab and Haryana area. Then Upper Ganga plain in the Haryana and the UP area and some parts of the Uttarakhand. Then Middle Ganga plain we have in the area of UP and Bihar. And Lower Ganga plain we have in the West Bengal. And then we have the Brahmaputra plain. So these are the regional divisions of the plains. So important points we will see. Okay. So Rajasthan plains. If Rajasthan names comes in what it is the there we have the presence of Arauli hills. Okay, remember that there we have the presence of Arauli hills. So it is extend, extended over an area of 1.75 lakh square kilometers west of the Arauli hills. Okay, and here a part of it, it is formed by the retreating of the sea. So there we have the formation of Sambar Lake. So in this plain we have the Sambar Lake. Okay. And in this plain also we must know that we have a river flowing that is Luni River. Okay. And this particular Luni River we have the inland drainage. Okay. That means what we don't know that where it drains, where it ends. Okay. It, it does not go to the run of Kutch area like it does not drains there. Okay. So it is being it is being draining before the run of Kutch area only, but we don't know confirm that where it is being draining. Okay, so we have the inland drainage. Okay, so here at present a large part of plain has become desert, which is covered with the sand dunes and the barchans. Okay, and the major rivers if you see Luni and its tributary we have the Jawai, Jawai, Bandi, Sukai, and lakes in these regions we have the Sambar Lake. Idwana Lake and the Degna Lake. So in this we know that we have the desertification. Okay. And in this place only we have the presence of the Thar Desert. Okay. And here we have the this field is suitable for the agriculture of the coarse grains such as sorghum that is known as also the Jwar and the millets. Okay. So here large amount of sorghum and the millets are grown here. Now, second plains we have we come about the Punjab and the Haryana plain. Okay, so the the western part of this northern plain, which is formed by the Indus River system. Okay, so it is being formed by the Indus River system, and it is a fertile plain. Okay, that's why if you see about the green, if you study about the green revolution, there you all would see that most of the parts of the green revolution was success in the part of the Punjab and the Haryana. Okay, so it is the most fertile plain, and in this plain we have the five dwarfs. So on the basis of five dwarfs only, Punjab was named as a 
name. Okay. So Punjab five is what? Like in Hindi, we call it as the Panch. Okay. That's why Punjab was named. So in this particular, what do we mean by the Dwab? Okay. Like in the big water body, in the sea areas, we studied about the strait. Okay. It is what? It is the land between, land between two water bodies. Okay. So that is what states. Okay. Similarly, Dwab, it is the land between two rivers. Land between, between two rivers. Okay. So that is what? That is Dwab. Okay. So we have the various names of Dwabs. Okay. Between Jhelam and Indus, we have the Sindh Sagar Dwab. We studied that Indus is also known as the Sindh. Okay. So the name of that Dwab is what? Sindh Sagar Dwab. Okay, and rest all dwarfs you can remember by just studying the name of that particular river or by studying the names also you can say that the river's names like Chenav and Jhelum we have. So Jesh Dwarf, Chenav and Rabi, we have the Reshna Dwarf, Rabi and Bias, we have the Bari Dwarf, Bias and Satlaj, we have the Bish Dwarf. So these, these are what? Five dwarfs of, in the Punjab and Punjab in the Punjab plains. Okay. So see in this map you can see Sin Sagar Dwarf, Chad Dwarf, Rajna, Bai Dwarf, and the Bish Dwarf. Okay. And this particular part you all must know about the arrangement of the all those rivers from north to south. Okay. Like we have the Indus, Jhelum, then we have the Chenao, then we have the Ravi, Bias, Satlaj. So in this way you must remember the names. So that is about the Punjab plains and the, in this part only we have the Malwa plains. So that is the part of this area and all we talk about the green revolution. So that was successful in this area only. Then next we move to the Ganga plain. So in the Ganga plain, this Ganga plain it is being named and the, as the alluvial deposits of the Ganga river system. Since the presence of most of in this plain, most of all those rivers plains are being formed by the Ganga river system. Okay. Like Ganga river system means what? Ganga and its tributaries. Okay. Like its tributaries we have the Yamuna, we have Son. Okay. So all those rivers are flowing in these areas. So that's why we have this plain name as the Ganga plain. And this plain it is majorly in the UP, West Bengal and the Bihar area. So and this area is only what? Densely populated and these particular plains we have three divisions that is upper gangetic plain, middle and the lower gangetic plains. Okay. So these are all what from the Ghagra to, to the Tiska river we have the Ganga plains. So remember that and Ghagra river sorry not Ghagra, Ghagra river flows in the Haryana region. Okay. So now some points about this particular plain. So since Ganga river is flowing and this is the more most mostly fertile area okay and major rivers all these are at ganga and its tributaries are there yamuna ganda koshi okay and these particular regions if you see the importance we have the religious cities prayagraj banaras or economic cities like kanpur and delhi okay 30 to 40 percentage of the indians human resources means what like population it is densely populated okay so human resources find, found out in these areas only, 30 to 40 percentage. Okay. And we have the floods also in this area. And since it is highly populated, so here what happens? So because of that, we have the, de we have the development also. So because of that, we have the land and water pollution in these areas. So now if you see the difference between all these plains, upper gangetic plain, middle gangetic plain, and the lower gangetic plain. So in this particular part, see here, western part of the gangetic plain is in UP. Okay. So just one minute, someone from the class, just take the attendance and send it to me on WhatsApp message. Okay. So now we continue. So upper gangetic plain and middle and the lower. So see here, if location, if you see, it will be in the western part of the UP. Okay. And the middle gangetic plain, it is mostly in the parts of UP and Bihar. And the lower gangetic plain, it is in the part of West Bengal. So remember that West Bengal is formed by the 
lower gangetic plane, not the Brahmaputra river. Okay. Then formation, if you see, all are formed in the quaternary age only. But what happens? It is formed by the deposition of debris and the sediments. Okay. So all these parts, all these parts are being formed by the debris and the sediments. Okay. And in this, in the lower gangetic plane, we have the geological phenomena such as subsidence. Okay. And that is responsible for the formation of this plane. Okay. And the, if the subdivision, if you see, so in this plane, we have the Ganga Yamuna Dwa, we have the Rohi Khan plane, we have the Avat plains. Okay. And in these areas, four major parts in the middle gang gangetic plane, we have the Ganga Ghagra Dwa, we have the Mithila plane, we have the Kosi plane, and then we have the Magad and the Anga plane. Okay. And this, and in the lower gangetic plane, if you see, we have the Dwar plane, Tar plane, and the Badin plane. Okay. So in this part, the middle gangetic plane is the most important. Okay. So actually, see, okay. So we'll mind up our class here. Okay. So in the tomorrow classes, we'll start from this point and we will cover fully about these points and then we'll go on for the peninsular plateaus. Okay. So that we see, in, see about in the detailed manner. Okay, we have just two minutes after your science class will start. So we will mind up and if you have any doubt, you can ask from me in the tomorrow class. Okay, so someone have taken the attendance? Yes, sir. Okay, okay, thank you. So you all can leave now and can go on for the next class. Thank you all, Jain. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Jain, sir.